Gerald Magad, thanks, Kahir. Look, uh, yeah, similar to my uh, colleague here, uh, Senator Conway. Uh, Minister, you're very welcome, uh, Minister Rabbit, to the House here. And uh, I suppose it is November, it's the National Diabetes Month, and Sunday was World Diabetes Day. And many buildings, you know, across the country were illuminated in blue, in court, including UL as well. Um, I mean, diabetes can happen through all stages of life. I mean, from young children to older people. And the good news is that we can combat the effects, I mean, through insulin. And we can also reduce the risk, especially with type 2, by, you know, you can make lifestyle changes. And that can have a huge impact for type 2. Um, symptoms, of course, can be feeling a lot thirstier, going to the toilet more, vision changes. And the reason I'm saying this is that not an awful lot of people know that they're pre-diabetic or, uh, you know, potentially on the route to type 2. We can, as I mentioned, reduce the risk. But take a test, go to your GP or pharmacist. Um, I'm a member of the steering group for the Cross-Party um, Diabetes Committee here in the Rockless with Diabetes Ireland. Recent data from the International Diabetes Federation, IDF, um, spoke about how one in 10 people around the world are living with diabetes, lifelong condition, one of the top 10 leading causes of deaths globally. Um, they've released new figures, and it's 537 million adults, they say, are living with diabetes, 541 million adults across the world pre-diabetes, and the prevalence of diabetes worldwide is expected to even rise to 784. Um, Minister, uh, Ireland does not have a national diabetes register. Um, therefore, there is no accurate figure we don't know where people are, we cannot put our finger on it, and during the COVID crisis it was very hard to identify that cohort of people for vaccination, that particular vulnerable group. There were steps where it was funded through Solange Care initially, and of course COVID came along and of course priorities, priorities had to be made. Um, but this is largely an ICT project. Um, like as I mentioned, there's a public health crisis, many competing priorities, I mean even just trying to work out how people get ICU beds, that's the crisis right now. Um, but as a country, why do we need this? Well, the only way that we can estimate, and, and you can speak, uh, Professor Sean Deneen, who's one of the most, is the clinical lead, the endocrinologist based in UHG, and we do have an excellent uh, group funding that's gone into the research around endocrinology and around diabetes, specifically in Galway. Uh, we have the research infrastructure to do that, um, and it's one of the cohorts that we've, we've come excellent at. But like, say for example, in Scotland, they have, a, they have a register. So if you compare Ireland to Scotland, Scotland's got roughly about 5%, comes to Ireland, you're looking at over 266,000. If we compare their figures to us and our population figures, and for type 2, 234,000, 28,000 with type 1. That's comparing to the Scottish figures. But as I said, we don't have concrete data. This is an estimate. Um, for Professor Sean Deneen, his number one priority, number one priority as the National Clinical Lead is a diabetes register. That's what he is looking for. Um, and that's what I think everybody, particularly in Diabetes Ireland, and especially when they made their pre-budget submission. Um, we need it, Minister, because we need to track prevalence. We need to measure outcomes, and we need to look at the costs of care. It, it is crucial. And Minister, I suppose what I'm asking you is, in relation to eHealth Ireland, um, what supports have been offered? We've had huge investment now into IT, and I very much understand the HSC cyber attack uh, decimated the health services, even more than the impact of COVID-19. I think people do not realise the impact the cyber attack had on the health services. But how and in what way will eHealth Ireland uh, support this launch of care development of a national diabetes register? And how will we ensure that this is an integrated national re register within primary care? So in other words, GPs and the front line uh, will be able to to take in that information about type 2 and pre-diabetes um, and also that that's connected to acute hospital settings as well. Um, Minister, I'm sure it's not within the, the realm of this question, but you know, an electronic health record. It is something that I've been calling for for a long, long time. It's something even in my previous role, it would make and streamline uh, so many elements of what we want to develop in healthcare and make everything so much more possible and feasible. But just really, you know, this would be a way to see forward if we can connect primary healthcare with the acute setting through the National Diabetes Register, and I suppose just what eHealth Ireland can do on that. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you, Chair. And can I thank the Senator again for raising the topic of diabetes, and it is incredibly timely in the fact that we have celebrated World um, Diabetes Day last Sunday. And, and I'm taking this again on behalf of Minister Donnelly, and I think your question has far reached into other areas uh, within health, which hopefully I'll get a chance myself when I complete with this, the statement to respond to. So diabetes is a complex condition that have a profound impact on the quality of life of people living with the condition. If not well managed, it can lead to a deliberating complications. The increasing prevalence of diabetes poses a major challenge to our health service, increasing costs driven primarily by hospitalisation and treating associated complications. 
Management of the condition is required across the entire spectrum of health care delivery, including self-management support, as well as care delivered through general practice, community specialist care, and hospital inpatient uh, specialist care. Currently, as you have said, Senator, Ireland does not have a national diabetes register, and therefore there is no accurate figure of the number of people living with the condition. It is acknowledged that the absence of a register represents a barrier um, to improving diabetes care for individuals living with type 1 and type 2 diabetes here in Ireland. The establishment of a register would help with tackling the prevalence of the condition, measuring outcomes and the cost of care and planning for the future services. In September 2019's Launch Care Integration Fund was allocated um, to the HSE to design and procure a national diabetes register demonstrator product and to develop a full specification plan for a di national diabetes register. It was intended that the register would be in place by 2021. And however, the project was paused as it was dependent on the input of expertise of key HSE staff who were redeployed and on to urgent and ongoing COVID-19 work. The National Diabetes Register, along with other disease-specific registers, is now being considered as part of a wider review of Ireland's health information strategy and legislation in light of lessons learned in recent times, along with substantial increase in government investment in e-health. Such registers capitalise on the unique identification of patients and the subsequent data linkage opportunities this enables. When in place, this will operate as virtual registers and will use existing health and social care records to enable monitoring of the incidence and prevalence of the disease in Ireland. Virtual registries will identify people with specific diseases data extracted from systems such as hospital inpatient and outpatient records, laboratory tests and pharmaceutical data collection. Each vital registry will be allowed to require and request the provision of relevant information for health and social care organisations and anyone who is providing a health or social care service to ensure each registry will have complete coverage of its area of prevalence. Virtual registries will allow for the development of disease-specific registries in a way that maintains comprehensive and up-to-date information that will meet the needs of many different stakeholders. And the development of a national diabetes register will have a long-term benefit on the provision of appropriate health services by providing reliable information to healthcare planners and policy makers. And I suppose it's important also to acknowledge the role that GPs do and how up to date their information system is and, and their technology. And really it is incumbent um, within the department and within the policy makers and within the HSE to ensure that there is also that receiving ICT network um, that can match where our GPs are at because it's not till we have the whole um, grouping pulled together will we see the entire benefit. So that's where it talks about the stakeholders. I think it's incredibly important. And sometimes, perhaps it's there already, we just need to expand. You have one minute to respond, Senator Dorn. Thank Dora. you very much. And uh, Minister, thank you for your response. Um, as you, as, as I've recognised, uh, you know, these delays did happen because of COVID-19. Minister, you've talked about here different uh, virtual registries. I suppose, Minister, is there a timeline with this? So in other words, what is the timeline? When do you think that we're going to maybe see this? Some work was already done. Uh, with the investment that we've put into eHealth Ireland, you know, part of our programme for government, part of the budget that came through this year, is there going to be an allocation from that specifically perhaps to look at these registries? And the reason I say this, Minister, is that the impact that we've seen, as I mentioned, 28,000 at type 2, but there was a, there's a HSC type 2 cycle of care programme where they estimate, uh, estimate that literally was put in place for type 2, this one, that 100,000 people were eligible uh, for the 12 months of September 2019. However, over this year, only 12,000 have been seen out of, let's say, 100,000, right? And basically, the reason we need to be concerned about this is the, apps, the, the related complications. So you're looking at stroke, you're looking at kidney disease, you're looking at eye and foot damage, you're looking at heart attacks. It requires hospitalisation. So it's just... I suppose, Minister, if I can bring it back again, you know, the, the investment we put into eHealth Ireland, when do you think we may see that these registries may be something within the next six months, potentially? Thank you. Uh, 
Um, thank you very much, Senator. And for me to, to, to actually put a timeline on it, it wouldn't be within my gift. I think Minister Donnelly is the one that would have to speak to that piece on it. And you are correct in saying that there has been funding allocated aside there in relation to the e-budget. But when you have that um, slippage in the numbers that you talk about there, one will have to ask the question, how did that happen? Uh, and what is the cost of care and the long-term costing of care within that? And is it the fact that our system is not working within general practice, or is it not working within the wider sphere of health? And that's the first question we need to know, because that sort of leakage is unbelievable, that needs immediate uh, addressing. And I will bring back that to Minister Donnelly out of today's um, um, commencement matter here. But the development of a national diabetes register remains a priority and following substantial increase in investment in e-health is now being considered as part of a wider review of healthy of Ireland's health information strategy and the diabetes register along with other specific registers will operate as virtual registries and will use existing health and social care um, records to enable the monitoring of the incidence and the prevalence of disease in Ireland and I, I want to actually acknowledge um, Professor Dinehan's input into this and sometimes we don't perhaps need to have wider registers when actually we need to start with the focus group to see the results of it.